So I'm going to introduce Keith. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time. <laughs> uh, I think we decided to select the team that we selected to do this work 12 months ago, I think. I mean, so we're, and we don't, so we've been through a long procurement process at that point. So I can't tell you how thrilled I am. Keith is here to make a presentation to you this morning about this. And he's got an amazing team. <clears throat> they put together Catherine and Carrie and Carlos and everybody on this team. It's, and I, he'll talk about it, but, but I, I think. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll talk about it and say it's a, it's a really amazing collection of people that will be working on this. And for me, everything that we're doing in the planning department, <clears throat> it's worth doing exceptionally. It, it, Atlanta is, is an amazing place. We all know that. Where, you know, the near future and the longer future present so many uh, wonderful opportunities for us. And I know we feel it's important that we don't just do things medium, but, but we try to do things as good as anybody's doing it. And, and I think we have the right team to do that. I learned about biohabitats back in, I think, 2010. I was in Portland for the Eco Districts training they had started. And learned about them and tried to get Keith to work on something in Charleston where the old Cooper River bridges are, you know where that is, <clears throat> is on Old Creek. And there was a lot of discussion in a very, an area that floods a lot, that there was a lot of discussion about concrete and pump stations and things. And so I approached Keith about looking at restoring the creek as an alternative. And then I left Charleston and nothing happened on it. I think there's some concrete there now. But, but the, the, um, the thing about um, this is, if you know about the city design project, which I hope you do, and I started describing it like this recently, to me, and, and we compare it, I know, but this is, it's not as good as this, but we compare it to the Chicago Plan of 1909, just in terms of the, 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 the table it's trying to set for the city. And, and for me, nature in Atlanta is the Lake Michigan waterfront that was, was to Chicago, in the sense that if you look at Atlanta, and you say, what would we need to do in order to make this, you know, one of the best cities anywhere? It's to do the nature and the urban really well together and that intersection together. Because if we do that exceptionally, then, um, and we've done it. I mean, you're doing it. Everybody here is doing it. I mean, I'm not saying it's not being done. <laughs> I'm just saying that. The city has a responsibility here too, and that is to, to, to basically put in place a framework where we can we can do all of that as well as anybody's done it. So um, this we're going to come up with a different name other than urban ecology framework because you don't smile when you say that. <laughs> it sounds like a procedure of some kind. But, <laughs> so we'll have a different name. If you have an idea, let us know after hearing from Keith. But but. Happy to have them here and present to you what they're about to engage us on because this will be a very public process. So, Keith, come on. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for showing up bright and early this morning. Hopefully, you've all had your coffee and tea. Um, thank you, Tim, for that introduction. And I think we may be still working on that. In Charleston, hopefully. So, um, Charleston is certainly, I, I'm, I'm living in Charleston now, and I've certainly faced with a lot of issues in terms of uh, sea level rise and other factors. But I was here a couple of weeks ago for a conference called Eco Districts, and Tim mentioned that, and we met in 2010 out in Portland, and Eco Districts is about this idea of communities taking on you know sustainability in a way that can, from a community perspective can really um, reap a lot of benefits and so I know that there's efforts underway within the city of Atlanta to do an eco district here and we had a great a great two or three days here in Atlanta and um, certainly learned a lot from that so what I'm going to do today is talk about Urban Ecology Framework, as Commissioner Keene said, it's not a very sexy name, so hopefully we can come up with a, a better name on that. As 
uh, Commissioner Keene also said, we're still not quite contracted for the project. So um, I can talk about what we're going to do, but I can't talk about what we've done. So uh, we'll go into that. But, but now is the time to get your ideas out and your thoughts out on this uh, as we hopefully get started in the next couple of weeks. Um, typically, uh, this is, these are some slides from the city design, the city design process, and some of you may have seen these or have seen the, the, the book that was uh, produced. It's online now, and I think it's being, I think it's being published, produced right now on hard copy, right? And one of the things that city design looks at is the growth in, in Atlanta, right? And that not changing is not an option. We're going to grow here in Atlanta. And how we grow is really important. So the most strategic scenario for growth includes everyone, right? We all need to be included in that process here. And I, City Design really took its sort of foundation from uh, Dr. King in terms of the aftermath of nonviolence is reconciliation and the creation of the beloved community. And the beloved community has become sort of the framework for City Design which I think is a, a great segue into what we're going to be doing from an urgent urban ecology framework. And sort of the five pillars here in terms of city design are equity, progress, ambition, access, and nature. And today we're going to focus on nature. And it's, I think it's also pretty, pretty extraordinary that nature takes a role in city here. And it, it is one of the five pillars of the city design process. So the approach is looking at growth areas, and looking at growth areas is sort of those arteries or spines that come out on the central core. But there's also conservation areas, and those conservation areas are designated to connect nature and protect other things that we value. So how do we go about protecting nature and connecting nature throughout the city of Atlanta? And that's going to be our charge over the next 18 months, is to figure out how that happens. And so, city design has come up with the phrase, we're going to design for people, we're going to design for nature, and we're going to design for people in nature. Which really provides, again, a great framework for where we start here. I, I fear that I'm probably speaking a lot to the choir here and to sort of the tribe of, of uh, um, nature in the city, but I thought I would go through a little bit of um, maybe introduction to this for those of you that are, aren't quite familiar. There's been a lot of work over the last probably a uh, couple decades in looking at urban ecology and the whole science of urban ecology and the social and economic aspects of urban ecology. So it's a relatively new field, but a field that's beginning to grow quite substantially, and one that we can begin pulling resources in from some of the work that's already been done. There's been two long-term studies of urban ecology in the United States, funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, one of those is out in Phoenix, Arizona. The other is in Baltimore, Maryland. And in Baltimore, uh, the Cary Research Institute, which is based out in New York, has been doing a long-term ecosystem study of Baltimore for about the past 20, maybe even 25 years there. And a lot of good information in science, both ecological, environmental science, and social science has come out of those long-term studies that I think are really applicable to the work that we're going to be doing here in Atlanta. So when we think about ecology of, the, of, this, um, of and for cities, there's a lot of things that we look at. We look at everything from sort of the human ecosystem framework to ecosystem services that I'll talk about in a minute, to feedback, to the sort of social ecological systems and resiliency, which is a word we hear quite a bit these days, um, all the way to sort of the more uh, uh, ecological or environmental scientific uh, aspects of urban ecology and how they all come together to form sort of the place where we work, we play, we live in the city. And so all these things are going to be combined and we're going to be looking at, at, at them in, in greater detail for the city of Atlanta. 
Now, one of the reasons that we look at urban ecology is because ecosystems provide a lot of services for us, right? They provide everything from bi uh, biodiversity and, and um, soil formation, to food, to clean water, clean air, to healthy soils. Um, and they, these ecosystem services are, in a sense, free to us. And in many areas of the country and the world, we degraded ecosystems and we're beginning to lose some of these services. And I think it's uh, incumbent upon cities like Atlanta and other cities around the world to think about ways that they can begin to restore or regenerate some of these ecosystem services within the city and how they can leverage that even outside the city. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at in this urban ecology study is these ecosystem services. What role do they play in the city of Atlanta? Um, what's the value of those ecosystem services and how they benefit people um, throughout the city? The other thing that we're going to be looking at is biological diversity, right? The diversity of ecosystems within the city, the diversity of species, and even the diversity of the um, genetic aspects of species, uh, whether it's plants or animals, and how they live in the city, how they move around, um, how they enrich the city, how they enrich our, our, our uh, well-being in the city. So biological diversity is going to be an important factor in looking at urban ecosystems here. In fact, one of the things we, we talk a lot about climate change, and climate change is certainly an issue that we're all dealing with, but um, what it doesn't get talked about much is the loss of biological diversity around the world. And many scientists are now uh, saying that we're under this sixth grade extinction, right? That we're losing biodiversity at an alarming rate. And I love this quote from E.O. Wilson, the biologist from Harvard. He says, if all mankind were to disappear, the world would regenerate back to the rich state of equilibrium that existed 10,000 years ago. If insects were to vanish, the environmental the environment would collapse in the chaos. Right? So imagine a city where we're doing everything we can for pollinators, pollinator species and insects, right? How can we how can we really leverage that idea um, and make this city a pollinator pathway or a pollinator city? And how can we combine that into this urban design framework? Uh, the, uh, the, um, around the world, there's a movement um, by the United Nations and by uh, the World Conservation Congress, IUCN, and others, and the Conventional Biological Diversity to bring biodiversity back to cities. And so there are some great examples out there of how cities like Singapore, um, some others in, in Germany and Australia have begun to look at how biodiversity can play a role in cities. So I think Atlanta can really um, embrace this idea and take this idea and demonstrate how biodiversity can play a role in its city. The other idea is resiliency, right? Michael just mentioned that, and that's the theme of the conference coming up in March here, is resiliency. And urban ecology certainly plays a role in resiliency. And I would say that ecology in general, whether you're in an urban area or not, has a huge role in re the resiliency of our communities um, in terms of looking at water scarcity, in terms of climate change, air pollution, storms, disturbance events, and, and certainly human health. And so when we look at the urban ecology framework for the city of Atlanta, we're going to be looking at all these factors here. And I think the city of Atlanta has experienced probably every one of these factors at some point in time, if not experiencing them now. So the whole idea of resiliency is going to play a major role or a major theme in the urban ecology framework that we're going to be putting together. And then this whole idea of biophilia, right? And another term <laughs> by E.O. Wilson. Uh, the idea that you know, we possess this innate tendency to seek connections with nature and other forms of life. So from a social cultural standpoint in the city of Atlanta, how can we bring nature back into the city so people have that experience, they can experience this? We always like to think about uh, uh, blurring what we call blurring the boundaries, blurring the boundaries between parks and non-parks. So you don't even know you're going into a park. 
stuff, right? How, how can we blur the boundaries out there so we have a urban ecology framework that really sets up the idea that you can experience nature at maybe different scales, different intensities throughout the day as you live and work and commute through Atlanta. And then this whole idea of human health, right? Um, there's a movement underway now by the um, uh, Urban Land Institute, the Public Trust for Public Lands, the National Recreation and Park Association, to kind of launch this idea of everybody should be within a 10 minute walk of the park, right? Everybody. Um, and we know that there are areas out in our urban areas where green space doesn't exist, or the quality of green space isn't what it needs to be um, for people to adequately use that green space. So looking at the urban ecology framework from a human health standpoint, from an access standpoint, from an inclusionary standpoint is going to be really important as we move forward with this project. The other big one is trees, right? Um, that's really what defines Atlanta, uh, in terms of if you look at urban ecology, the canopy cover over Atlanta, and I know you all know this much better than I do, um, is one of the major assets of the city of Atlanta. So obviously the urban ecology framework is going to be really heavily focused on trees, both trees and water systems, right? Um, so the idea of the tree canopy in Atlanta now, what is it now, what is it going to be in the future? I know there have been roundtables and conferences on this um, by many organizations, and there's many organizations throughout the city of Atlanta that are working on this. And our, our job sort of is to bring all that information together, synthesize all that information, and see how it fits in to this urban ecology framework that we're going to be working on. And I think we all know sort of all the benefits of urban trees. Um, there are a lot in terms of mitigating air pollution, conserving energy, uh, affecting sort of the microclimate, um, helping out from a stormwater management standpoint. Probably the number one thing we can do for stormwater management is plant more trees, right? Um, and so the, the tree canopy cover over Atlanta, the types of trees that we have, where they're planted, uh, how they're aligned, the density, the diversity, all that will be taken into consideration as we're working on this uh, framework here. So there have been a lot of these types of, not a lot, but there have been some of these types of plans done for cities throughout the world, and I'll just briefly go through a couple of them for you, and then a couple that we've been working on, um, and then I'll get into a little bit more detail on the urban ecology framework. So Barcelona has been working on a plan here to bring back sort of green infrastructure and biodiversity into their city. And if you know Barcelona at all, you know that the center of the city is pretty dense. It's an old town. In fact, there isn't many trees in the, city, in the center of the city. There isn't many green spaces uh, in the center of Barcelona. They have a lot of green space around the edges, um, but not much in the city. So one of, their, one of their sort of plans is how can we bring more green space into the center of the city? And rooftops and reimagining some of these city streets 